Hello everyone. This is uh, Luos's uh, Particle a Day Volume 1. I'm going to show you the particles that are available in this. And uh, this is called Shrill Beam. I'll show it from the other angle as well. Alright. Triplaster. Crescent Boom, three versions of it. Train. This is Thistle. Which is basically showcasing what you can do with random meshes. Well, semi-random meshes. And each time it starts, the roots and some other things are different. This one is called Hill Leaf. Now one more time. Uh, let's go all the way to this day seven effect. This is called Kaiser Beam. And this is my iteration on a beam that Mega Man would shoot. There's a lot of GPU particles. Keep in mind that these particles are just uh, showcase examples and not all of them are uh, whoop, work in a video game. But it's, this whole package is more for the textures, the materials, the material functions, the factor fields. And I wait for you to support me for the particle of the day thing. Let's go to the next week. There we go. This one's called Diamond Spawn. Okay, that one was empty for a reason. This is for Texian. No, right. This is a bark ball. As you can see, the white ball is going through some kind of black cloud and changes. I'll show it from the other angle as well. Okay, one more time. Alright. This one is called Loot Coins. Don't think it needs an explanation. This is called Foya Fairy, or just Fairy, whatever. And it's a small little butterfly esque fairy flying around. This one is called Karosha, and a little bit out there compared to the other ones, but it's a nice showcase of how to emit and demit something. Or spawn and despawn. Okay, then there's another showcase for week two, which is called Paralexia. This one is in a separate map because it's a bit out there. This is all in one emitter. And it basically showcases some other things you could do with Cascade. In this case, a parallaxing cityscape. All right. Okay, let's continue with week three. This one is called Bomb Waker. Basically, inspired by the Wind Waker bombs. 
go. This one is called World Copter. It uses all kinds of ribbons. Okay. And here we have Arrow Rain. I don't think this one is an explanation either. Okay, once more. Okay. This one is called Hexafield. And there are two other showcases for week three. This one is called Skybirds. And that's basically just some blackbirds flying about. And one that's flying around. Okay, and then the last one of week three. It's called Full Cannon. And this is quite a beast. Okay, one more time from this angle. Alright, let's see if I can actually all the way over here. I'm still far enough. Boom. Getting there though. Then you should from the other side. I got this one out. Okay. This is from the other side. Here we go. Boom. All right, let's go to week four. This one is called the Fine Laser. Should from a bit higher. And all the way over there are the other ones. This one is called Buffering. Then we have Toon Kaboom, which is a small Toonish impact. A Fight Cloud, another Toonish effect. Two people fighting. One more time. Alright. And another Toonish explosion. Toon Boom 2. And Cloverfields. Which is just a giant clover spawning. A lot of tiny clovers. Let's get a little bit closer. There. And there's another showcase for week four called Blue Ghosts. Which is just creeping me, creeping on you. There we go. One more time. Alright. Now, besides the effects, which isn't actually the whole thing for the package, there are a lot, a lot of materials and textures. Uh, the materials are nice showcases, but the textures might be more interesting, which are all kinds of masks, noise textures, detail effects, and every day he has a lot of them. Also a lot of static meshes effects. Uh, let's see, this one actually doesn't. All kinds of textures. 
which you can actually use for yourself. That's the whole more important thing, I think, of this package. There's also some general content in which uh, a few other things are available, like noise textures, a uh, few detailed normals, uh, gradients, all kinds of effects. And you can make a lot of particles with those. And more importantly, probably some very interesting material functions. If you've been following my particle day project and you have seen me using some of them, uh, alpha erosion, easy rotate, mass distorter, an easy set of four ribbons, um, Luo selector, which is basically uh, randomizes four inputs in the cascade, a texture cropper, uh, very simple, um, pl plug and place, uh, place and plug, time and sign function, uh, distortion, and li liquidator. And I'll go into those a little bit later. Explain some of the material functions that are available in this package. Uh, open the Lugos one. And we have the Lugos Moth Distorter here. It uses a normal map, or any other texture is actually fine, but the normal map works best. And you can basically change how strong that effect is. Let me just right mouse click on this and preview it. There we go. And move this and get the scalar going. Come on. At zero, there is absolutely no distortion going on. And at one, there's a lot of distortion. You can get, get even higher if you want to. But a little bit of distortion goes a long way. So let's see, open tool. There you go. You can already see there's some distortion going on, which is really cool for particle effects and maybe some water order effects. It's all up to you, of course. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. And that results in some really nice things. So that explains the MOS distorter. And a lot of the effects and material functions I added uh, do the same kind of thing, but in another way. So just play around with them. Okay. That's that. This will be the material function showcase kind of thing. You can easily find them by just uh, searching for Luos. And let's start with Easy Rotate, which is very simple. If you have a texture, I'm just going to pick something random there right now. And you put it into the UVs. And you can then rotate by 360 degrees in a very easy way. So if you want to rotate this texture by 90 degrees, let's drop the PVM first. Then all you need to do is add a 90 here, and you rotate it 90 degrees, 45, etc, etc. And then let's do the lowest time sign, which is just the time and the sign is combined. It's nothing really special, but it saves me a lot of time instead of having to make a time and sign over and over again. And obviously that doesn't work like this. Uh, there we go. I need to multiply it a little bit. As you can see, it moves a little. little. Let's see if it helps. There. And that's basically what the time sign does. It just signs over time. Okay, let's see what else is there. The alpha erosion. Let's multiply another texture with that. Uh, I want a cloud texture. Let's do the cloud mask. Get the right channel for that. Uh, oh wait, the right channel needs to go into the alpha channel there. Let's preview it here. And this needs to be a scalar, but the time sign works for that as well. And it erodes the material. Instead of just fading out, it first picks the darkest spots and fade those out, and all the way to the lightest spots. And this erosion kind of effect really helps with selling some of the effects. It also is really cool for fire. And yeah, just play around with them. Uh, the mass distorter I showed before. But let's do it one more time just for funsies. Some of the alpha erosion. Get a normal map, norm underscore, and there should be a lot of them available for you. 
create a material object out of it. Texture object. There we go. And that's the effect you'll get if you combine that with an actual material. So let's do the clouds again. Let's pick another one. And to the UVs there, you get the distortion effects I showed you before, which can result in very nice, cool effects. All right, the ribbon trail is very simple. Just to make sure that everything's set to translucent or mask, whatever you want. And this goes into the emissive output and is in the opacity output. Let me stop previewing this. And you have a simple ribbon trail already. Okay, the selector is a little bit different. Um, let's say you have four textures. And you plug in one and that one. Second and second input, third and third, of course, and fourth and fourth. Now, if uh, the value that gets puts into the selector is below five, it picks the first texture. It's below one, it picks the second texture. It's below 1.5, it picks the third. And it's below two, it picks the fourth one. And let's see if this actually works. Multiply it by two. And just show it on there. As you can see, it selects between those. And this is kind of a cool randomization feature for particles. That way you can use one material for four effects. And randomize between those. Alright. Uh, the texture cropper, I actually have a tutorial for that separately. So I think that's better to keep that tutorial and use that one instead of really explaining that again because that will take a while. The time sign was explained. The UV distortion panner is almost the same as the mass distortion. Uh, it has a few different effects. In this case, and let me show you the result. Uh, let's get this one. There, remove the things I don't need anymore. Get into UV here. Let me get another cloud texture. Oh. Plug it into that. And preview it here. And this one uh, uses some custom code, so it might not work for uh, your Xbox or PlayStation game. You need to ask your coder to write something that's inside of this. Keep that in mind. And basically, if you use a factor of 3, uh, you can actually just select the R, G, or B color with this. So if you want the R, the red channel, you do that. If you want the green channel, you select that here. If you want the blue channel, use that. And you can pick up to two channels at the same time if you want to. You can change the panner, the texture size, etc. etc. And the UV liquidator is uh, like the biggest beast out of this ones, out of the distortions. Again, it uses normal maps. So let's use normals. Um, underscore. Let's pick the first one. There. Let's get a second normal map. You can use the same one if you want, of course. And there you go. And the texture sample again. You can change the texture of the first normal map, the speed of the first normal map, same with the second, and again you can decide how the normal map strength will be. So, uh, here, that one, it's a lot of distortion, two obviously is higher, um, but a little bit often goes a long way with small distortion effects, as you can see. Alright, that explains all the material functions that are available. I hope you find them interesting. And that's it. Take care.